Al Gore, bring this up, Jordan. Al Gore is going to create an Inconvenient Truth sequel. So he's pretty happy about that. He's going to be creating the Inconvenient Truth sequel. And um, a British high court ruled. This is, this is not a conspir- right-wing conspiracy, anti-science conspiracy. A British high court ruled that there were nine significant factual errors in an Inconvenient Truth. Uh, but they still allowed it in schools. So there's, there's, there's nine significant errors, but we're still going to allow this to be shown in schools. With Al Gore, I'm sure you just must have jumped out of your seat when you heard that he was doing an inconvenient truth too. Did you not? Did you not know about this? <laughs> well, you know what? You know what's extraordinary, Stephen, is I'm just amazed he's alive. By the way, because, <laughs> because um, what, what's quite amazing is that because he said he said that we would be all dead by now. So I just think we should take a moment and celebrate the fact that we're even here, Stephen, because, you know, a lot of people (laughs) said we'd be dead. Now, obviously, they've been saying we've been dying for a really long time. But Al Gore said it. And, you know, you know, you just like Al Gore. He was on a cherry picker. He was telling us stuff. And Mm -hmm. anyway, we're here, Stephen. So a lot to celebrate. I'm not (laughs) sure what his film's going to be about because everything he said was basically wrong. Here's the story with the polar bears, Stephen. Here's the story. (laughs) Get it. Get it. They're smoking <laughs> and they're really fat and they're hanging out in huge numbers, in record breaking numbers. Yeah. A 40 year high in the population of polar bears. <laughs> they're smoking, they're hanging out. It's a really good time for polar bears. Yeah. If anything, they're just getting a lot of very, very fat because life is good and yeah. life is lovely for the, for the polar bears. You know, I, I'm really curious to see this new movie of Al Gore's because I'm wondering, is he, is he going to just drop his polar bears? Because obviously the polar bears have let Al Gore down and we're all disappointed about that. Yeah. But the polar bears have not, had not, I've which, spoken which to Which is sad for them because they took him today, in as one of their own. He lived with them. And those polar bears have not heard the news about their own extinction. John Holdren said that by 2020, a billion people would be dead because basically of our use of fossil fuels. Yeah. You know, when when do they, you know that thing of um, love is never having to say you're sorry. Right. When do they say they're sorry? Like, when do they say they're sorry? Yeah. And Al Gore said 10 years ago, if we didn't take drastic, drastic steps to change our behavior, we would reach the, and I, I wish we had music for this, Stephen. Hold on. How do you, the point, the I'll, point I'll, I'll of give no it to you. return. The point of no return, Stephen. Get we have already shoals. reached the point of no return. So we should just, you know, burn all the fossil fuels we like. Gordon Brown, who was the prime minister, not an idiot, a prime minister. Well, let's maybe well, debate it's that. Up for debate. Gordon Brown, who was the prime minister of the, United, of the United Kingdom in 2009, said we had 50 days, 50 days left, 50 days left to save the planet. Prince Charles, oh, bless his heart. Ugh. Prince Charles, who, you know, we have the very funny video about him. Prince Charles, hypocrite, said... In 2009, we had 96 months left to save the planet. You re- Rajendra Pakuchri, whose name I'm sure I'm butchering, right. the head of the IPCC, said in 2007, we had four years to save the planet. I don't know, maybe these guys should get together and come up with some kind of consensus on when it is yes. that we're all about to die. George Monbiot, who we really do love from The Guardian, said in 2002 that in 10 years, the world would have to choose between feeding the animals on the planet Mm -hmm. or feeding the people, but we couldn't have both. Well, let's just feed the people with the animals. That doesn't even seem like a... (laughs) (laughs) I think it's extraordinary, you know, how easy it is for elites who have the life that Al Gore has, the beautiful life that he has, flying around in planes and having lovely dinners and being warm in his lovely house and in other houses and, use, you know, just using loads and loads of fossil fuels and being really wealthy. And that he would impose on the poor of the world an alternative to fossil fuels. When fossil fuels have worked out so well for all of us, and we're living these very safe lives, by the way, mm-hmm. we have our children, if they get sick, going to hospitals where we're not relying on the wind blowing or the sun shining yeah. for the electricity to be to be on. But he's imposing that kind of, uh, those kind of, uh, that awful, unreliable energy on the developing world. And I just think it's, it does, as you say, there's a really tragic side to this. It isn't funny at all. We have a preview now for 10 years later, uh, An Inconvenient Truth 2. Al Gore seems excited about it. A decade ago, I released my Academy Award winning documentary, An Inconvenient Truth. It was met with great applause, fanfare, and cold hard cash. 
But to my dismay and everlasting shame, a British high court ruled that many of my facts were unfounded and outright misleading, legally obligating me to produce this sequel. I found out that the ice caps were not melting, but in many parts of the world gaining more ice than they were losing, and that polar bears are in fact not endangered, but alive and well. Also, they're kind of ass I was extremely surprised to find out that sea levels were not actually rising so fast as to threaten all the coastal cities I'd warned about, allowing me to stay in my beachfront mansion. Also, I still sit on the board of Apple. And finally, I learned that carbon dioxide is necessarily not in fact a pollutant, but a byproduct of the planet's natural cycle, necessary for all living beings. It's time for your massaging! Now, Sven, hold up. I'm just finishing my movie trailer narration. But Mr. Gorin, I'm already in the cosplay outfitting! An Inconvenient Truth 2 in theaters 2017. Okay, Sven, but this time no slippers! I want those little piggies to get wild and wooly! Hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the button that says subscribe. If you're not aware of it now, there's no way you're learning the internet at this point. I'm not going to help you. But this was clipped from my daily show, available exclusively to lotterwithcredit.com slash mugclub members. If you're a student, military, or veteran, enter in that promo code. It's less than $6 a month, and you get daily content. No more clips, plus this hand-etched mug. Oh, I just, when I feel it, I got a chill, like, on the inside.